Hello. Okay, my name's Anne. I'm going to give you a little story today. It's a true story. A little bizarre, but true. Um, it's all about Roger Moore, because uh, I was his web manager from 2002. And before I actually got the gig, and then before I'd met him, I lived in Bradford. And I knew Roger had a connection with Bradford, because he was on the board of directors of Pearson and Foster's, which is a, a mill. And they'd made the clothes for some the saint and definitely quite a lot of the clothes for the persuaders so i knew that was true i'd remembered it from being a child the mill and the connection with roger so i looked into remember before i'd met him uh did he live here how the persuaders when it was first brought to you the idea by your friend bob baker and partner yeah. um did you like the idea and did it develop differently Which while you were the persuaders yeah uh, no we, we we discussed the, the what it would like instead of just being a saint to try uh, two men which always worked like Spencer Tracy Clark Gable that sort of buddy 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 but a buddy movie um, and we had we did an episode of the saint with uh, an, an American actor and I was told by loads of people that he did live in Bradford and it's really weird I'll give you a few quick stories. I'll show you one of the properties that was I was definitely told was Roger's house. So we'll get off and I'll tell you a couple of stories on the way and then we'll see what you think because it's quite interesting how the old Chinese whisper that's good, I couldn't shut the door then. Chinese whisper produces these. We'll be there in a minute. Oh, Stuart Damon. Stuart Damon. Yeah, I remember, yes. And, uh, it worked very well with him being a Texan. Yes, I've seen it. Yeah. Roger Moore, it's pretty rare for a Yorkshireman to give anyone a free meal. What have you done to earn today's? I think by helping spread the word around the world that Yorkshire cloth is best. How difficult has it been to spread that word? Oh, well, physically it's a little tiring, you know, sort of tearing from country to country. But it's not difficult when you've got good quality product in your hand to sell. Is it difficult to sell that product though? Is there much competition? Oh, there's competition from all over the world. Mm -hmm. But England still, you know, and particularly Yorkshire, has a magic name in cloth. What sort of cloths go best abroad? I, well, I think, the, you know, sort of in various weights. I think the, the funniest thing I found was in Singapore, where they're sort of selling sort of miles away and they want 16 ounce cloth. Now you know how heavy that is in that climate, you know, with that humidity, but they feel that's the way they dress in Europe. So that's the way they want their suits made. How did you first become interested in cloth? Uh, well, I, I was approached uh, by David Wilkinson and Pearson Foster a few years ago, and it didn't sort of come out of the blue because I already knew what Pearson and Foster was. In the Saint, I suppose I must have gone through about 30 suits, 40 suits a year. And I found that certain of the suits lasted longer than others because of the cloth. And it was Pearson and Foster, so it was a pleasant surprise when David got in touch with me. Did you have to do a lot of studying of cloth before you could go out and sell it? Uh, well, I've had the sort of the quick tour around the mills and everything else, and I've sat and listened, and I've learned a lot. I learned a great deal more actually going out on the road and listening to what buyers had to say about it, and sort of picking their brains. Do you regard this as an insurance against the days when you're no longer the saint or a film actor? I've seen a couple of my pictures, and I feel I should have a little insurance. <laughs> OK, so I'm walking through Shipley Glen towards this property, which is um, nice. But as I say, he didn't live there. Um, and in actual fact, during the time that I was doing the website, this is before I actually did the website, I was trying to get, it's a long story that, get access to Roger's website, which I did eventually. But um, I was told by loads of people that he lived in Bradford because of this connection with Pierce. This is another lovely house in Bailden on the outskirts of Bradford. And even next door, there's an old people's home. And one of the old chaps said to me, he used to warn the past on a Saturday evening. I'd have a pint with him in the local pub. It never happened. You know, there was, um, there was a lodge called Moor Lodge near Haworth, near Ponder Mills, 
and the local Telegraph and Argus historian reporter said Roger lived there it's a fantastic building actually but it's a it's a furniture shop now in fact there's other stories that I'm not even gonna bother saying well one quick one there was a flat and a local policeman said one of the local bobbies knows that Roger Moore owned that flat in Charlestown Shipley which are all in Bradford but he lived in none of them now this is the property that the lady who owned told me that Roger Daphne lived in this property at around that time and it's absolute rubbish it's coming up if you can see it because it's a nice area it's building it's Shipley Glen nice place Shipley Glen look <coughs> corner of building moors so yeah it's a nice spot and maybe if Roger had wanted somewhere to live <coughs> this would have been okay but he didn't he used to fly up with Derek Wilkinson do his work and go back to Elf Street Studios right just wait till this bike goes so I don't get mowed down right here we go God, don't you just love motorbikes? They sound like ten cars together. That's it. It's a Chinese. It's a Chinese. It's a Spanish double-fronted cottage with a stream. So it's nice. It's nice, look. So basically, the moral of the story is that don't believe these celebrity stories by word of mouth because they're often not true. And. Um, the number of people that told me in later years when Roger used to answer six questions every month which I chose you know from the, the fans and there were so many that used to come through and say oh Roger lived in my town he lived in my village he lived a Just a, a, a local question, um, Pearson and Foster's, I bet most people don't ask this because it's more interesting to me, but did you enjoy the, you know, Pearson and Foster's and the directorship and yeah, David was, Wilkinson? Yeah, it was interesting, I learned about warp and weft and yeah. God knows what about cloth. Yeah. Uh, and all the clothes I wore in Persuaders, of course, were Pearson and Foster's. Were made there, weren't they, yeah. But unfortunately it went belly up. It did, yeah, yeah. Did you ever go to Idle, the little village behind? It's an unusual village called Idle, with the Working Men's Club. Well, I, 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 went, I went to the, uh, the mills, but I... Well, the mill, yes, I suppose it is a mill. Yeah. It is a mill, yes. Uh, in, in Bradford. I knew it was not Bradford, but Bradford. <laughs> Uh, but I don't remember going to a village called Idle. No, it's famous for the Idle Working Men's Club where he's leaning on the spade, you see, it's oh, Idle yeah. Working Men. <laughs> no, it's one of those rumours, but this I mean, the number of people that have said you've lived in certain places and you never have done, it's no. amazing, isn't it? <laughs> you've lived everywhere. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, they have buses going, so it's on the top. There's a bus tour in Bournemouth, yeah, <laughs> and they live on the top, on the top of the park floor apartment. Uh, in Denmark, there are places where I'm supposed to own <laughs> houses and apartments. Strange. Never did, never did. Weren't true. <laughs> See ya.